Okay, so one of the more common questions that people ask me about my Nissan LEAF is they want to know, how long does it take to charge? Well, that's a difficult question to answer, and so I've made this video in order to attempt to properly explain that. So, there are essentially three ways to charge a LEAF. There's level one charging, which is 110 volts, and there's level two charging, which is 220 volts, and there's level three charging, which is 440 volts. Now, before I start getting a lot of nitpicking from electric vehicle enthusiasts, I'm going to point out that it's technically not called a charger, you know, the thing you actually plug into the car. It's technically called an EVSE, which stands for Electric Vehicle Service Equipment. Now, 99% of the population is going to call it a charger, so that's what I'm going to call it from this point on. The LEAF comes with a level 1 charger in this nifty carry bag. One end plugs into any 110 volt household outlet, and the other end plugs into your LEAF's charge port. If your battery were completely drained, it would take 21 hours to fully recharge a LEAF using this method. Most people are going to want to install a level 2 charger in their garage. This type of charger works off of a 220 volt and will have a direct wire to the breaker panel and its own dedicated 40 amp breaker. Using this method, the LEAF can charge more quickly, and if the battery were completely drained, it would take 8 hours to recharge the car. Level 1 and Level 2 use the same port on the car, but some LEAFs have another port. You'll notice mine is missing, but it has a little blank space next to the regular charge port. Here's a photograph of what that would look like if I had the Level 3 charge port on my car. Now, the Level 3 charger would typically only be available in a commercial environment, uh, but it can charge the LEAF very quickly. Uh, typically, uh, you get nearly a full battery charge in uh, less than 30 minutes. Okay, so I've given you the raw numbers. Now, let me explain why those numbers are almost meaningless. Uh, notice that in each occasion I said if the battery were fully drained. Well, the truth about it is that very rarely happens. Most of the time that you plug your leaf in, you're still going to have some power in the battery. Let me give you some real life examples. Uh, I drive about 10 miles when I go to work and back every day. So when I come home and I plug into my level 2 charger in the garage, it usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes to fully recharge my car. Um, on an occasion that I drive a little further than that, like let's say I go out on a trip to the other side of town and I come back and I put 50 miles on the car, well my battery's still about half full so uh, it's still only going to take 3-4 hours, maybe 5, probably 4, uh, to fully recharge the car. Um, so those numbers that I say like 8 hours to recharge the car, you're not really going to encounter that very often. The other thing that a lot of people seem to be confused about is that it is not necessary to fully recharge the car before you can drive it again. So um, I don't have to come home and plug the car in and wait for it to recharge. It, I could come home, plug the car in for five minutes and go, oh man, I gotta go to the grocery store. I just go back out there, unplug it, go to the grocery store, come back, finish charging it when I get home. It's, it's really pretty simple. I mean, a lot of people seem to make it like it's so complicated or, or like it's, you know, so inconvenient. But I can guarantee you this, uh, I've been driving the car for, you know, six weeks now, and it is a lot more convenient than leaving your house in the morning and looking down at your gas gauge and going, oh, man, I'm about to be late to work. Look, i got to go to the gas station. Now I'm going to have to stand out in the freezing cold weather while weird thug people look at me like they're going to rob me while I'm filling up, you know, my... my uh, tank with gasoline, so I can assure you charging is, is uh, much more convenient. And, um, you know, the truth is when considering the possibility of an electric car, most people spend way too much time uh, worrying about, you know, oh, I don't know if I could have an electric car, I don't know if I'd ever be able to charge it up enough, and I don't know if the range will take me where I need to go, or whatever, and the truth of the matter is, I very even rarely think about that type of thing. Um, granted, I don't drive, you know, ridiculous uh, distances to work and back, but uh, there are actually quite a few times I, I come home in the evening and I don't even plug the car in. I could probably go two weeks um, without ever plugging the car in and it wouldn't affect my ability to drive 
you know, to work and back. Um, you know, and and of course, <laughs> I realize there are people out there that drive ridiculous distances to work every day, like 75 or 100 miles. And I know I get emails from those people all the time, and they're like, "Well, electric cars just aren't practical because it just the range is not good enough, and it takes too long to recharge." Blah blah blah. blah. And my response to those people remains pretty much the same as I've always said. It's like, well, you know what? If you drive those kind of distances to work, I guess an electric car is just not for you. So drive whatever you think you need to drive. Um, that's, you know, I mean, maybe a few years down the road when the uh, ranges uh, improve and the uh, charge times improve, um, you know, maybe you could reevaluate that. But, uh, you know, right now the electric car is not aimed at uh, you know the customer base that drives 100 miles a day. It's just, or you know, it's just not aimed at that that particular segment of the market. Uh, it's aimed at the segment of the market like me, which there are millions and millions of people like me who do not drive ridiculous distances to work every day. So, um, anyway, uh, that's probably enough for um, this episode. <laughs> Catch you next time.